Hello crafty cheapskaters. I'm making Christmas cards this afternoon so I thought I would bring you along with me. I do a lot of cards every year for my family and of course for the nursing homes, the schools, all the other things that we, we give cards to too. So I like to mass produce them and of course that means that they have to be quick, they have to be easy they need to look really nice because I don't want to give a card that I wouldn't like receiving and they need to be inexpensive because my craft budget only goes so far. So today I am using what we call Kmart cards. Now I've talked about these in the past and these are white card blanks, this white blank white cards and envelopes come in a pack of 25 from Kmart, standard size, so they use a, a regular stamp, they go as regular mail. And when you're mass producing lots and lots of cards, having the card bases ready made really helps, especially when it's 14 cents for the card and the envelope. So that's cheaper than buying the card stock and making your own bases, then making your own envelopes or buying envelopes. So this is a standard. 14 and a half centimeters by 10 and a half centimeters and that's what we'll be working with today when we're going to do these really simple Christmas cards so I've gone through my papers and found some that I thought would be really nice to use these are just bits left over they're really quite pretty i love this one i just love i love this one and the pine cones how pretty are the pine cones okay so they need to be cut down to 14 and a half by 10 and a half but i actually don't want them cut down that size i want to leave a bit of a border around it so it's going to be 14 by 10. There we go. I don't want to lead you astray. I'm going to flip that around so I can see what I'm doing. Now this is already nearly 14. Now if you have directional paper, you will need to be aware of that. Do not throw that strip away. We will use that. And then we're going to go 10. And I wonder how many I'll get out of this piece. One. Two. Hopefully three. Yes. It's just a teeny tiny sliver off. Okay. That's three card bases cut. This one's really pretty too. I like that side. This one's double sided. But I quite I think I prefer this one with the bells on it. And is there a is it particularly I'm going to put it this way. So this will be 10. Again, do not get rid of these pieces. We will use them by 14. Now I'm using my paper trimmer which means if I am clever and find designs without a direction or I put them there, I can cut two at once because it's just paper. It's not cardstock, so it's just um, patterned paper, designer series paper. There we go, swing it around, level them off. Beautiful. And can I do it with these ones? Which side am I going to use? It'll be natural, but if I want to use that side. And just checking the direction of the paper. Okay. Just in case. So we do that. Swing it around. Oh, I should have been timing because these are pretty quick, these cards. And this one is so, so pretty. And this definitely has a direction. You see the um, deer. 
so we need to make sure we cut it in the correct profile or we make a mistake okay so that's those now for this bigger sheet with my paper trimmer the arm comes out and it goes all the way across to 17 inches or 43 centimeters which is really really good if you're a scrap for cutting bigger pages and it actually is I think not quite 30 centimeters square okay so what we're going to do is we're going to line it up at 30 bring the blade down cut slide it across to 20 uh, then we'll turn around this way, do this, just to save a bit of time. Right, now it won't matter. So we go down to 20. Can you see what I'm doing if I move you down? And then 10. And I'll get six pieces out of that one sheet of paper. All right. Now, I am going to, but I am not telling you to do this. So it is not recommended. I'm just going to do it to save time. Line up my papers. Line them up on the 14 mark. Through. Nope. What did I do wrong? Oh no, I did cut those 14, didn't I? Yep. Alright. Miscalculated somewhere. Cut those at 14. Do not get rid of these bits of paper. We will use them. Okay. That's the card fronts done away my paper trimmer now how many do I have let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen okay let me get fifteen cards out of my bundle we'll go um, three six nine twelve pick it up fifteen okay we'll do the envelopes in a minute right make sure they're all going the same direction these are all cut to the way I want them. We are going to stick these like this on the card fronts. So I like this side better. So I am going to just, if I can find it, found my trusty art glitter glue. Give it a shake with my silicon net because I might make a mess. <laughs> might. You know I will. Okay, card. Card. Works better for me if I can do it like this. Pop the pin down so I don't lose it. Get some glue out. Perfect. I love art glitter glue best liquid glue I have tried uh, absolutely brilliant for go sticking things down now um it's a little hard to get and it is a little pricey 
I get it from Creative Dreams here in Baronia or you can get it from Bev's Cross Crafts in um, Tasmania. They're online. You can get it from there. You only need the teeny tiniest little bit. Uh, uh, uh. See, this is directional, nearly made a boo-boo. Okay, turn it around, make sure it's going the right direction. Make sure it's got an even border. There we go. Pays to pay attention. Okay, now these ones doesn't really have a direction, does it? These pine cones are really quite cute. You only need the teeny tiniest little bit. Now this little nozzle that I've got um, is an extra that you can get for your glue and it comes with a stainless steel pin that fits into the top to stop it from drying out. Now I do a lot of paper crafts and I do a lot of card making so I do a lot of gluing. And I can tell you that while, you know, $10 for a bottle of glue might seem an outrageous price, it will do quite a few hundred cards. So I tried to do the sums and in my estimation, it worked out to be less than a centre card if I use the art glitter glue. So I am really happy with that. It doesn't bleed through like some liquid glues do and it doesn't um, lose its stick like some of the double-sided tapes do or the tape runners do. So for me worth it because I want my cards I don't want to give a card that I wouldn't be happy to receive I want my cards to be good enough to give if I would be happy receiving it then I'm happy to give it but I do not want to be giving a card that's a slap dash put together in a hurry <sighs> fall apart the drop of a hat type of thing i want them to be nicely made now i'm not running right to the edge because it's liquid and it goes when you put it on it smushes out and i don't want it to smush out of the uh, oh that's pretty see which one do i want again now that's directional make sure i've got it going in the right direction Oh, no, I like that one. Okay. Nearly had a change of mind there. Um, so here we go. Is this one directional? No, this isn't. That's quite pretty, though. Do you like these tartans? They're very Christmassy, aren't they? Even here in Australia, the tartans are Christmassy. I think we have enough... Scottish and Irish amongst us to enjoy them. Okay, what's on this one? Uh, now that's directional too. So that goes that way. I'm using the um, little silicon sheet when I'm putting the glue on just in case I'm a bit heavy handed and it runs off oh, that's quite pretty too All right. this is one direction oh, it goes that way okay um, because I'm not working on my cutting mat I'm working on my regular desk mat and I don't really want glue all over it I want to keep my desk mat as pretty as I can. So that easy enough to make new ones. So, um, so let's 
I always wish they had a little arrow somewhere on the paper that says this way up so that you can find it. And it goes this way. Oh, I've got an extra card. Did I miscount? I must have. Or a double stuck one. Oh, we will find out. Okay. All right. That's the fronts done. Now, they're pretty ordinary, a little bit plain. So what I'm going to do is punch. Let me see. I've got... Why is that from the wrong way? Three. Three. Six. Nine. Twelve. Fifteen. I did just pull out one extra card. Okay. I have a stamp. That I want to put on the front in a circle. So I've got scraps of white cardstock here and I am just going to use, if this is a two and a quarter inch punch, one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Can't get another one out of that. Need another little bit of black for it. Now I am going to use uh, red, 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 pink, green, red, red, green, 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 red. Okay, I'm going to use some red, some green to stamp the greeting, and I'm going to do that using the stamping platform. Simply because it I'll start with the green. Um, now I've popped a stamp pad under the lid there, just makes it a little easier to use. I will pop a thing in there. Now, what did I do with that stamp? I just had it. Literally just had it. Here it is. Um, line it up. It's already on rubber. Push it down. Hold it up. And I need to do how many green ones did I say? I've forgotten already. I need to concentrate. Three, six, eight. Eight green ones. Okay. Stamp pad down. Okay. Now, the beauty of using the stamping platform is if I don't get a nice crisp image the first time. Oh, perfect. See that? How pretty is that? Two. That makes me happy. This 
one may not be so clear because I don't think I didn't get the bottom. And I don't like that one, so I'm going to turn it over. It's no mistakes. You can always redo it if you need to. That's better. That's four, five, six, seven, eight. Putting the stamp pad under the um, plate means that you can ink up the stamp a little easier uh, this way and there is when you do punch a shape out there is a right and a wrong side I'm not sure if you can see this side can you see it's quite it's not a focus it's smooth this side has a bit of a ridge to it right okay that's the green ones done put the ink away oh no need that swap it out for the red clean the stamp I don't want to carry any of the green into the red and pollute it. Um, what did I do with the lid to that? There it is. Okay, open up the red. And let's get stamping. Oh, so, so pretty. The stamping platform. It does give such a nice crisp image when you're stamping. You don't have to fuss and worry about it. Um, this is the Tim Holtz uh, Tonic Studios stamping platform, and I love it because it has a side for the rubber stamps, which we're using today. And if I was using a clear stamp, there's a side for that too so that they stamp perfectly every time which is really nice because there's nothing more frustrating than stamping an image and it not being clear and you not being able to perfectly reposition or perfectly stamp over it again and while clear stamps were a big improvement on the rubber stamps for doing that it was still really, really hard to line up the clear stamps perfectly if you've moved them. Okay. So I am really happy with those. Put that away. Where's my... Clean my stamp off. I try to clean my stamps off straight away simply so that... Well, they're easier to clean, but I don't want them to stain... I know that might sound a bit silly, but it's me. I don't want them to stain. I like them to stain nice. Now I'll leave that on there so I can put it back in its rightful box. Okay. Pop that away. All right. Now, here's what we're going to do. Um, Let's lay these out because I'm going to put the circles up on pop dots. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I'm trying to line up. Do you see? I'm trying to line up to put the pin in, honestly. So I'm going to just sit like that. These can go like this. Uh, and I'm using these little pop dots. I am always generous with pop dots. I see no point to not be. They are very inexpensive. They will add no more than a C 
percent to the cost of your card i think i worked out um i buy them in big sheets from arthur daily which is a discount store here in melbourne and this thing a thousand for two dollars they're very inexpensive so you can afford to go a bit crazy with the pop dots when they are that price and they just give a bit of dimension to your project and then i'll take all these little doodlewackies off now and i'm going to pop it right there all the little backs off now i sometimes keep these little backs they make great caterpillar eyes they make great eyes there we go. Um, otherwise just use them as white dots if you want to or um I done I done enough have I I don't know I'm so confused oh, there's one there I thought I'd missed one just counting them out in my head and I know there's enough so crafting with me is never boring is it nothing I do is ever boring really just real life it's how how things happen in our house don't flip on upside down really liking those pine cones they are so cute now they would have looked very nice too with a brown or a, a coffee colored stamp if i'd thought of it i didn't think of it but they would have looked really pretty wouldn't they Pine, pine cones with a little bit of brown okay there and then we're going to go oh, lift off these little bells these silver bells are so so cute too okay there we go right let's do the red ones spread these down so you can see them all right get more post-its when I'm cooking I like to clean my craft area as I am going it just makes it so much easier when I have finished crafting because then it is done all right now so so pretty I'll we'll make these look really good a little bit of bling a oh, little bit of bling I might have to run out and get the bling box that would be so good wouldn't it just a teeny tiny bit of bling would make them look really really pretty okay okay red and green just screams christmas it just does I know the other colours are really pretty and I'm loving some of the blues and silvers that I'm seeing this year, but red and green, still like the traditional colours. Still do it only once a year, so, you know, so, so pretty. 
me see if that's right. Get that up there. Get this one down here. Okay. All right. Next. Next job. Wrangling all these bits into the rubbish bin. Just a bit. Here we go. Into the bin. Cleaning up the desk as I go. Well, there you go. Like I said, here we go. We've got one, two, three, four. Let's see them, can you? Five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 15. Easy peasy. Easy peasy cards. Now, we could take one step further because there's nothing on the inside of these. And I will be stamping a sentiment that just says Merry Christmas on the inside. Um, do I need to put all the reds together? That would help, wouldn't that? And all the greens together so I don't get the stamp, the ink mixed up. Okay. Same deal. Put them in the stamping platform. Line them up. Get them done. They will be done and ready to go. Really simple. Really easy. Really quick. Uses odd bits of paper that you have lying around and it doesn't have to be it could be scrapbooking paper it could be wrapping paper it could be paper from a magazine it doesn't have to be anything um, spectacularly fancy I had these bits of paper to use up these patterns so I did punch the stamp a couple of ink pads and they're done okay I think I've um, kept you for long enough. If you like our video, please remember to give us a thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed to our channel, please click that subscribe button and then the little bell and that will just let you choose when you want to be notified of new videos. And don't forget to share. I'm sure you've got a friend somewhere who would like to know how to make a really simple, very quick, very inexpensive Christmas card, especially if they need to mass produce them. Okay, I'll be back very, very soon with another Cheapskates video to save you money, time and energy. Until then, happy cheapskating.